We bless your name, O oh God. Father, we bless you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for all that you've done for us, O oh God. Lord, as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ today, Father, we lay everything that we have at your feet. We lay hold on the finished work of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, because our King is risen from the dead. Our Savior is alive forevermore. Father, we exalt you. We magnify your name. Have your way, Father God, in your word. Lord, as we lift up the name of Jesus, draw men up unto yourself. Be thou glorified, O God. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 hallelujah, glory be to God. Let's thank God for our praise team as they go, thank you praise team, God bless you, thank you for blessing us so much, amen. You may be seated in the Lord's presence and just give me a few minutes to uh, wrap up our celebration this afternoon and uh, Minister from the Word of God on a theme that I've titled The King of Glory. If you please go with me to the 24th Psalm. The 24th Psalm. Psalm 24. Are you in the 24th Psalm? Psalm 24 and verse 7, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up you everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. What gates? Temple gates. Sanctuary gates. People gates. Hell gates. Nation gates. Every gate. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Is talking about giving the Lord of glory access that is due him. Lift up your head, O ye gates, is talking about giving him the honor that is due him and allowing him to take his place. The Lord, strong, he calls him. The Lord, strong. How strong was he? Well, take a look at his trial and his crucifixion. The Bible clearly gives us a picture of how strong our king is. We are told in Matthew chapter 27 
from verse 27, the Bible tells us, Then the soldiers of the governor, they took Jesus into the common hall, and they gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him, and they put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and they mocked him. They were mocking him. He was the king, but they were mocking him. And they said, Hail, king of the Jews. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and they smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him. We saw some of that this morning. And they put on his raiment and they led him away to to crucify him. And in verse 33, when they came to a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar. If you know what that is, a very bitter drink. And uh, they gave it to him mingled with gall, making it even more bitter. And when he attested thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and they parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there and they set over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. And... Look at how strong he was. After they did all that in verse 50, well, let's take it from verse 45, it says from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He felt forsaken, but he would not forsake his God. He felt forsaken, but he would not forsake the people he was dying for. And in verse 50, the Bible says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did shake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened and many bodies of saints which slept arose. And they came out of the graves after his resurrection. And they went into the holy city. And they appeared unto many. How strong was he? He was so strong that sin, pain, death, hell couldn't stop him. How strong was he? He was so strong, he was unstoppable. How strong was he? He was so strong, they couldn't break his will. He stood before Pilate. He stood before his accusers. He stood before the high priests. And he wouldn't change his story. His disciples forsook him. His foremost disciple denied him. A man who had brought joy and hope to many became lonely on the cross. Thank God for the cross. And yet hanging on that cross. Hanging on the cross. He hung his head and he said, it is finished. How strong was he? Isus, I'm going to speak some Hebrew. Isus, Gibor. Those are words that mean strong. Those are the words that describe Jesus. Isus, Gibor, strong. Mighty. Jesus, powerful. Forceful. Unflinching. Unbreakable. Unyielding. Having the strength of an army. That's our Jesus. That's our hero. How strong was he? He stood on the cross and confronted all of death and hell. And he did not flinch. The Bible tells us he looked at his accusers in the face and not once did he bat an eyelid. How strong was he? He stood strong and he stood tall. You couldn't change his resolve. You couldn't weaken his determination. 
Who is this king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. Gibor. Mighty. He was the epitome and the embodiment of might. Gibor. He was a warrior, a champion, a giant of a man. Valiant, courageous, bold, a man of valor. A man of strength, brave, a conqueror, an overcomer, a man of war. You know, you get the idea. He just fought and he just fought, but there was much more to his might. He was the greatest. He was the king. That's why the Bible called him the king of glory. He went into the gate of hell and he stripped the enemy. We are told in Hebrews Chapter 2, his strength wasn't confined to what he could do for himself. When people talk about strength in our days, they're usually talking about what they can do for themselves. This man had so much strength that the, the power of his strength and the glory of his strength wasn't in what he could do for himself. It was really so much more in what he did for so many others. It says to us here in Hebrews 2 from verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, so that through death he may destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He looked the devil straight in the eye and he came against him and destroyed him who had the power of death. And in so doing, in verse 15, he delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. He was the epitome and the embodiment of might. We are told in Colossians that he actually stripped the devil. He took everything that the devil had. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that were set against us, that were contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The Amplified Bible says, God disarmed the principalities and powers that were arranged against us and he made a bold display and a public example of them in triumphing over them in him in it through the cross. He was the epitome and the embodiment of might. Jesus, Gibor. Has anyone seen a man like this? A man who was pronounced dead, and right after he was pronounced dead, the earth began to quake. Temple cut and tore from the top to the bottom. Commotion everywhere. Graves began to open. Dead people popping up and walking through the street. A man had just been pronounced dead. Has anyone seen a man like this ever? Jesus. Gibor. They call him dead, but just as they were calling him dead, he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. He couldn't stay dead. Death couldn't hold him captive. The grave couldn't hold him bound. Even in the grave, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah, he's risen. Hallelujah, he's risen. Jesus, Gibor, that our Jesus. Notice he said, and who is this king of glory? He's the king. He was not just an ordinary man. He was and he is the king. He is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords. He's the greatest man who ever lived. He's the greatest lover, the greatest friend, the greatest savior. The greatest helper, the greatest sacrifice, the greatest king. He's the greatest of them all. Hallelujah. Do you remember when he stood before Pilate in John chapter 18? How many people do you know? When they're confronting death, they're about to be killed. And they are asked about their real identity. And they continue to, to talk about what they were created for. They will not go back or renege 
on what they declared was their mission on the earth. He stood before Pilate in John 18 and verse 33. And the Bible tells us, Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and he called Jesus. And he said unto him, are you the king of the Jews? <laughs> and Jesus answered him saying, you have said it. Did you say this because someone said that to you? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and your chief priest delivered you unto me. What have you done? Jesus answered unto him. This is the king. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you have said it. Thou sayest that I'm a king. He said, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. He's the king. He's the king. He declared, yes, I am the king. And you know what? After he told Pilate, I'm the king, Pilate asked the Jews to crucify him. And Pilate wrote the postscript or wrote the post on his cross and called him the king of the Jews. The leaders of the Jews came and said, no, don't write the king of the Jews. Write, he said, I'm the king of Jews. Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. Pilate got that from Jesus. He asked him, are you the king? Jesus said, yes, I am the king. And Pilate went and wrote on the cross, here, the king of the Jews. He's the greatest one. He was no ordinary king. He was the king of glory. In Hebrews chapter 2 and from verse 7, the Bible tells us he was crowned with glory and with honor. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 7 to 10. He says here, thou madest him lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and with honor. And thou didst set him over the works of thy hands. You put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under his feet. The whole world is under his jurisdiction. He says, but now we see Jesus, verse 8, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God he should taste death. For every man. He's the greatest one. He's the king. Hallelujah. He's not just the king of glory. He's called the Lord of glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says if the princes of this world had known. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says he is the image of God. He's the brightness of his glory. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of glory. He is the King of glory. He himself is the appearance of the Godhead. He is the image and the reflection of God the Father himself. You remember what he told Philip in John chapter 14 verse 9? Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long with you and you haven't seen the Father? He said, once you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's the Lord of glory. He's the image of the King himself. Hallelujah. As I close, let's talk about his glory for a minute. He's the Lord of glory. He's the king of glory. Before the world began, he dwelt in glory. In John 17 verses 4 and 5, in his prayer, he said unto the Father, he said, Father, I'm about to do your will. Now glorify me with the same glory that I had with you before the world began. He's the king of glory. He dwelt in glory before there was the earth. He dwelt in glory before there was mass. He dwelt in glory before there was the sun or the moon. He is the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. He was birthed and he lived in glory. The first time the earth heard the words glory to God in the highest was at the birth of Jesus. Nobody ever said that, ever. But when he was born, the angels showed up and they announced, they said he's born, the king is born. And they said glory to God in the highest and peace be to man. He was birthed and he lived in glory. The Bible tells us about his birth in John chapter 1 verse 14. He says, and the word became flesh and he dwelt amongst us. Talking about Jesus' birth and incarnation. He says, and we beheld his glory as the glory 
of the son of the living God. He lived and he was birthed in glory. That's not all. While he was on earth, his ministry was enveloped in glory. You remember when he turned water to wine in John chapter 2 verse 11? The Bible says this was the beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. And he manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. His ministry was enveloped in glory. He's the king of glory. You remember what he said in John chapter 11? After he heard the news of Lazarus' death, he said unto his disciples, don't worry, he's not dead. This has happened to him so that God can get the glory. And when he stood before the tomb and Martha and Mary were weeping in John 11 verse 40, he said unto them, did I not say unto you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God? His ministry was enveloped in glory. He's the king of glory. He went to the cross and he died in a blaze of glory. That's not a criminal blaze of glory like you hear about these days. He died in real glory. The Bible tells us in John chapter 12 verse 23 and verse 28. As the time approached and as he was about to die. He said unto his disciples, he said, the time has come and God is going to glorify his son. He says, except a kind of wheat fall to the ground and die. He says, it abides alone. He said, but when he dies, he bears much fruit. He died in glory. And in verse 28, the Bible says, God crowned him with glory through his death. In, 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 in all that he did, in every trace of his life, in every step that he took, glory greeted everything that he did. He died in glory, but he was raised up from the dead by the glory of God. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 tells us, he wasn't raised from the dead by the infusion of oxygen. He wasn't raised from the dead by the infusion of some um, special formula thing somewhere that raises people from the dead. No, but the Bible says he was raised from the dead by the glory of God. Amen. While he was lying in the grave, the Bible tells us, all of a sudden, glory was injected into him. Glory filled his blood vessels. He emptied all of his blood and glory filled him. And glory raised him up. And the same glory that raised him up raises up the church today. Raises up the people today. Hallelujah. He is the king of glory. He didn't just get risen up in glory. The Bible tells us he's coming back. In glory. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 27. Look at what he said about his coming. He's returning. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 27. He with his own mouth characterized his returning to the earth. And he said it's going to be in glory. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 24, 27. He says here. Hallelujah. He said, wherefore, let me read it from verse 25. He says, behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if, that, if they shall say unto you, behold, is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, is in the secret chambers, believe it not. He says, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Verse 29, and immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And they shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the, come, the son of man coming in the clouds with power and with great glory. You know he's coming back? It's not going to be long from now. He's coming back. And the Bible says every dead person in the graves are going to hear his voice. They're going to hear the sound of the trumpet. And in the twinkling of an eye will be changed and will rise up in glory just like he did. Hallelujah. He's the king of glory. And what is he doing right now? Right now, he's raising up sons and daughters to glory. You know, the story of Easter is the story of the glory of God coming upon the earth and visiting man. Visiting man in his shame. Visiting man in his destitution. 
You know, you saw that through the life of Jesus as he walked upon the earth. He'll see some heartbroken mother. He'll see some blind man. He'll see some lame cripple, some leper. People that couldn't mix with the society. People that had been cast out and cast away. And the Bible says he'll pull them up and he'll impart the glory of God upon them. His life was the embodiment of the visitation of the glory of God. And thank God when Satan tried to kill him. The Bible says, had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Satan didn't recognize that in fact in killing Jesus, billions of sons and daughters were going to be raised up upon the earth. Who were going to manifest the glory of God upon the earth. And this is part of what we celebrate during the Easter. We celebrate the Son of God who came all the way. Even though we didn't deserve his love. He came and he gave us everything. And he emptied himself. And he emptied his life. And he emptied himself of every treasure he ever had. And he gave it all. And he hung on the cross. And he went down to the grave. And he went down to hell. But on the third day, he rose up for our justification. And now you and I are candidates for the glory of God. Now you and I are favored children of God. Now you and I are blessed. Now you and I have the king living in us. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's risen from the dead. Glory be to God. Our king is risen. He's the king of glory. And he's risen from the dead. Would you please stand to your feet everyone wherever you are. And join me. Before we have our last celebration and close this service, just want you to join me in prayer for a minute. Everybody, please close your eyes. Do you know, in all that Jesus did, in everything that he did, in the price that he paid, in all the works, in everything that he did for man, it would be incomplete in your life and in my life if we didn't open up our hearts to him. You know, that psalmist, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. <laughs> and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Well, he's not just talking to wooden doors and iron doors and doors of brass and, 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 and things like that. He, he's talking to the hearts of men. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Let the king of glory come in. The Bible tells us in, in Revelation, he said, Behold, I knock. I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And if any man open unto me, I'll come in. And I'll sup with him. And I'll dine with him. You know in all that Jesus did, with all this glory he brought down to the earth, with all the favor he brought to us, you know, if Jesus doesn't have access into your life or into my life, it's wasted for us. So I want to challenge you this morning. Maybe you haven't given your life to him yet. Maybe you haven't opened up your heart to him yet. Maybe you're not born again. Maybe you haven't come to a point in your life where you say, Lord, I know you came and you died for me. You died for my sins so I would not remain a sinner. And I want to give you my life. And I want to give you my heart. I want to be a part of your glory. I want to be in your glory crowd. Maybe you've never done that. Or maybe at some point in your life you did that, but you've gone back into the world. Or maybe you're unstable in your Christian walk with God. Maybe you've not been steadfast. Maybe you've been up and down and in and out. And this morning, if you will lift up your heart and lift up your head and let the King of Glory come in, He can really do for you what no other man could ever do for you. I just want to ask, is there anyone in this room or anyone joining us online this morning who's saying, Lord, I want to accept you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I know you are the King of glory. I know you died for me. I know you gave up everything so that I would not perish. And this morning, I want to receive your sacrifice. I want to give my life to you. I wonder if there's somebody in this room saying that. Someone joining us online. If there is, I'm going to ask you quietly with every head bowed and every eye closed. Please, wherever you are, just raise up your hands to heaven. Say, pray for me, preacher. God bless you back there. That's me. God bless you. That's me. God bless you back there. God bless you. That's me. Pray for me, preacher. 
Yes, I know I've heard the Easter story. I've even done some special things at Easter. But, but, but I've never really opened my heart, given everything that I have to this King of glory, so he can make me one of his glory children, one of his glory sons and daughters. That's you. Raise your hands to heaven. God bless you. Keep that hand up. God bless you. All over. Keep it up. More hands. Anybody else here? Pray for me this morning. The one thing you don't want is to have the Easter story be just an empty story. No, no, no. This is the story of the most remarkable man who ever lived, the king of glory. And when you open up your heart and you give him access, he really does come in. He really does change everything around. He really does give you a new beginning. If that's you raising up your hands, please raise it all the way up so I can see it. God bless you. God bless you. Back there. God bless you. Keep it up all the way up. God bless you back there, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Brother, keep it up. Anybody else here? I know the Lord is calling. I know this is the significance of our coming together. God bless you back there. I know this is the significance of our coming together to celebrate the Lord, to celebrate his resurrection. And it's not complete for you unless you've opened your heart and you let him in. Anybody else? I believe there's more in this room. If you are joining us online this morning and you are giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to challenge you. Right there where you are, the Lord is there with you. His presence is right there in that room with you. I'm going to ask you to touch that computer screen as a point of contact. Open up your heart and God is going to do a supernatural work, an amazing work in your life. Everybody in this room who has their hands up and those that are joining us online, quietly where you are and if you didn't raise your hands but you want to make that same commitment right now I'm going to lead you in a prayer right there where you are I'm going to lead you in a prayer with every eye closed and every head bowed just join me in the spirit I'm going to lead you in a prayer just pray this simple prayer after me say Lord Jesus I believe you are the king of glory. I know you died for me. I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I don't have the power or the ability to change my own life. But Jesus, you are the king. You are the one who died. You were buried. And on the third day, you rose up from the dead for my justification. I open up my heart to you right now. I'm lifting up my heart to you right now. I confess all my sins. I renounce every sin and Satan and I open up my heart. I ask that you come in and become the Lord and the master of my life. Lord, I thank you that from this moment onwards, I do believe. I am forgiven, I'm saved, I'm justified, I'm redeemed. Lord, I give you glory and I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Come on, if you took that step for the first time, just rejoice in the Lord. If you took that step, or you are taking it a second time, or a third time, or a fourth time, but you know this was a significant thing you did this morning. Come on, lift up your voice and give him praise. Bless his name, because it was for you that Jesus came. It was for you that Jesus died. It was for you that Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we bless you today. We honor you. We celebrate your lordship. We give you the glory that is due to your name. We shout hallelujah to you. We exalt and rejoice in this house today.
Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, glory be to God.